Three asylum seekers, all three living in Glasgow, all three in the care of the UK asylum system, and now all three are dead. One in temporary accommodation, another found in her flat with her crying baby by her side. The third stabbed six people in a city hotel and was shot dead by police. Now the city's seven MPs have called for a fatal accident inquiry into the deaths. They say it would address escalating public concern and prevent further tragedies. One man who came here seeking safety has spoken to STV News about his experiences. Tasnim Nazir reports. Dirty appliances, blood-stained microwaves and filthy bed linen. Just some of the conditions refugees and asylum seekers say they found in accommodation operated by the Mears Group. When I got my new flat, it was really dirty. I called my friend and said, just come and help me, let's clean it, because I can't do it alone. Amir, not his real name, came to Scotland last December. At the start of the coronavirus pandemic, he was moved to the parking hotel, where he witnessed asylum seeker Badruddin Abdullah Adam stabbing six people and being shot dead by police after reportedly suffering mental health problems. It's changed me completely. As I was saying to my friends now, I have a dead heart. I cannot feel. I lost a lot of friends because I've changed completely. Glasgow has the highest number of asylum seekers in any council area of the UK. They have just £35 per week for additional food, clothing and transport. So often local charities have to step in when resources fall short. Abdul Bostani came to Scotland in 2001 following the war in Afghanistan. He leads a community group who have given masks, hand sanitizers, and meals to refugees and asylum seekers who he says have struggled more than most during the pandemic. We are a volunteer organization. We are a small charity like us. There are a number of small charities around the country working, but that's absolutely not enough. There are huge problems down there and it needs to be addressed at the government level. Miriam Tamiza helps asylum seekers integrate into their local communities. She says feelings of isolation and helplessness are made worse by long periods of uncertainty due to being unable to work. At least like to allow them to work so they feel through working they feel they are independent and they have their own money. They don't want like, the government to give them. That's what I heard from the people at the hotel. We want to work, we don't want ask them for money. Glasgow City Council has proposed a pilot scheme which would allow asylum seekers to work six months after claim was submitted. They wrote to the Home Office asking for a response to their proposal. They've also asked for more funding for wellbeing support. The Home Office told us asylum seekers are permitted to work in jobs on the shortage occupation list if they have been waiting for a decision on their claim for more than 12 months through no fault of their own. We take the well-being of asylum seekers and the local communities in which they live extremely seriously. Mears, the company that houses refugees, say they source and provide accommodation that is fit for purpose and meets all contractual requirements and regulatory standards. Amir says that's not his experience. The better life he left his home and family for still seems out of reach and stress is taking its toll. I have experience with self-harming. I didn't stop. It's increased. It's become worse. But like I say, no one cares. It's increasingly apparent this already vulnerable group are the forgotten victims of the pandemic. Efforts are underway to move all asylum seekers from hotels to more permanent accommodation, but this could take the rest of the year. For many, it's small acts of kindness from the community keeping their hopes for a better future alive. Tasnim Nazir, STV News, Glasgow.